number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan blasphemy laws legitimizing violence. Indian Army dossier exposes Pak's terror conspiracy. And Afghanistan likely to relapse into hotbed of terrorism. Pakistan is among the countries where blasphemy is punishable by death. In many instances, the accused are killed by mobs before legal proceedings even begin. Often, it is the members of religious minorities who end up being accused of blasphemy. But recently, a very bizarre incident took place in Pakistan in the name of blasphemy. A huge mob was gathered outside Star City Mall in Pakistan's Karachi and vandalized Samsung company accusing it of blasphemy. And all this happened after they heard rumours that Samsung company had introduced a QR code on its devices, which is blasphemous. A report. The controversial blasphemy laws in Pakistan have gripped the country and pushing it back in time. Recently, the country witnessed yet another incident of blasphemy. Dozens of Islamists unleashed mayhem in the mobile market of Karachi, after rumors of an alleged blasphemy against the Samsung company. The protesters tore down the billboards of Samsung in the city and indulged in vandalism after they heard that the company has committed blasphemy against Islam. The company faced the ire of the angry tehreek e Pakistan members when initial rumors circulating about the incident said that Samsung had introduced a QR code on its devices which is blasphemous. Following the protests, police in the city detained many company personnel and later Samsung was forced to issue an apology. This is not the first case of its kind. Last year on December 31st, a Pakistani man threatened a Pepsi company's truck driver with dire consequences if the QR code on a 7-up soft drink bottle is not removed by the company. Almost every day, someone in Pakistan is facing the allegation of blasphemy, a charge which makes his or her life vulnerable for the entire life. For the past few years, the South Asian country has witnessed a surge in blasphemy-related violence. असल में मसला ये हुआ है कि स्टार सिटी मॉल के अंदर किसी मज़ूम ने हमारे नबी करीम सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की शान में गुस्सा की की है, जो हमारे नज़दीक ना काबिले बर्दाश्त है। اسی لیے ہم لوگوں نے یہ احتجاج کیا پورا من جب تک ہم کو گستاخ نبی کا سر یہاں تک نہیں ملے گا تب تک ہم لوگ یہاں سے نہیں جائیں گے a large majority of pakistani people support the idea that blasphemers should be punished the country has the world's second strictest blasphemy laws after iran according to the us commission on international religious freedom these controversial laws are frequently used to settle personal disputes or to oppress minorities. Perhaps the most famous case is that of Asya Bibi, an improvised Pakistani Christian, who in 2010 was convicted of violating Pakistan's blasphemy law and sentenced to death by hanging. Fortunately, she was later freed and left the country. But not everyone has the same fortune. Even the high-profile supporters of Asya were killed in broad daylight. And who can forget the inhuman incident of Sialkot? Just a few months ago, curious workers of a factory in Sialkot tortured their Sri Lankan general manager to death over allegations of blasphemy and set the body on fire. According to a think tank, the Center for Research and Security Studies Pakistan reported a total of 1,415 cases of blasphemy in the country since 1947. Almost everybody who speaks out against these laws and procedures 
runs the risk of being the victim of lynchings or public vigilantism. Minorities ki koi jagah nahi hai Pakistan mein. Jis ka dil chata hai, utke jo marzi koi jhoote ilzam laga raha hai, koi blasphemy law ke andar logon ko andar kiya ja raha hai. Pakistan mein koi kisi kisam ka aisa law nahi hai ke jo minority ko bacha sake. Pakistan is among one of 32 Muslim majority countries that impose harsh penalties for blasphemy, apostasy or atheism and one of 12 that punishes these crimes with death. After the Prevention Electronic Crimes Act in 2016 co-opted the harsh clauses of the Pakistan Penal Code, blaspheming online became a capital crime. People accused of blasphemy face a grueling struggle to establish their innocence and even after acquittal, they face threats to their life. Pakistan's survival is not possible until blasphemy laws survive. Leaving appeasement politics aside, Pakistani lawmakers should repeal the controversial laws immediately. Pakistan has been one of the most prolific state sponsors of terror, aimed at advancing its national security interests. Over the course of the past three decades, Pakistan's army has built a complex network of relationships with numerous jihadi terror groups, including the Taliban. Recently, a 33-page dossier by the Indian Defence Ministry unmasked Pakistan's nefarious terror designs aimed to bleed India. The dossier details how the Pakistani establishment, including its army, carries out infiltration bits across the borders. It also points to how the Hindus, a minority in Pakistan, are being butchered. Take a look. India for decades have been facing the brunt of Pakistan's state-sponsored cross-border terrorism. There exists a well-established nexus between Pakistan's civilian government, military, inter-services intelligence and the numerous terrorist groups trained and armed in the country. The role of Pakistan is well established in the numerous terror attacks carried out against India. Recently, a 33-page dossier by the Defence Ministry has unmasked Pakistan's nefarious terror designs aimed to bleed India. It has pointed out to how the Hindus, a minority in Pakistan, are being butchered. The file highlights the killing of policemen, teachers and migrant workers in Jammu and Kashmir by park back terrorists who work as direct proxies of the forces in Islamabad and exposes how Pakistan kills political workers and brainwashes the youth in Valley to join the terror ranks. The 33-page dossier made by the Defence Ministry showing how Pakistan has been waging a proxy war against India in the last few decades, thereby causing immense death and destruction, is a step which is apt and appropriate. It comes at a time when Pakistan, in spite of staring at imminent bankruptcy, has still not been removed from the FATF grey list. The file titled Terrorist Incidents Along the LOC and in the Hinterland lists and elaborates the attempts made by Pakistani terrorists to cross over into India between 2020 to 2021. The comprehensive report also shows the route taken by the terrorists each time across the various sectors along the international border and the arms and documents seized from them by the security forces. It also lists the number of terrorists killed by the security forces while trying to stop them. The final component of the report focuses on targeted killings in Kashmir. In recent years, particularly since Article 370, which granted Jammu and Kashmir special status, was repealed in 2019, Pakistan-backed terrorists have attacked people in the valley. The objective is to instill dread and uncertainty in the minds of regular residents who are easier to target, while simultaneously peddling a false narrative that things are not normal in the former state. Pakistan has left no stone unturned to create mayhem in India, whether be it supporting the militancy in Jammu and Kashmir or militancy in Punjab. They 
at the smallest opportunity try to create mayhem in India and leave no stone unturned to bleed India. This dossier by the Defense Ministry will go a long way in apprising the international community of the terror acts that Pakistan employs as its state policy against India. Several camps have also been established across Pakistan and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir for training of the terrorists. Most of them are usually lured for monetary gains or brainwashed with fanatic ideologies. And now, the country is also facing the brunt of this measure as the Pakistan army has been on the target of the Pakistan Taliban. Countries with regressive thinking that are using terrorism as a political tool need to understand that terrorism is an equally big threat for them. But the real question is that, will the Pakistan learn from these experiences and mend its way to ensure its own growth and success? Only time will tell. As the Taliban reclaim the war to Afghanistan, security experts around the world want that the country could again become a hotbed of terrorist training and indoctrination. The Taliban has promised that it will never allow its territory to be used by foreign terror organizations, as it had for Al-Qaeda either the 9-11 attacks. But many in Afghanistan and West have reacted with skepticism. They are warning that the Taliban rule in Afghanistan is radically reshaping terrorist groups in South Asia and around the world. A report. Violence is intensifying in Afghanistan months after the United States retreat allowed the Taliban to return to power, fueling concerns that the country may again become a hub of instability and terrorism across South and Central Asia and beyond. Afghanistan has long been a base for terrorists with ambitions for global jihad. Dozens of groups that have been present since the Taliban's last turn in power from 1996 to 2001 are again operational, looking for opportunities to expand their reach. But the de facto rulers of the war-torn country do not seem to be concerned as they are desperate to get recognition. Recently, the Jirgao or Grand Assembly called for national support to the Taliban-run Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan and international recognition of the interim government. A resolution issued at the end of the three-day meeting called on Afghans to renew allegiance to Mullah Habatullah Akhundzada, supreme leader of the Afghan Taliban's interim government and implementation of Sharia or Islamic laws in the country. It is important that the international community should gear up, should look at Afghanistan so that it doesn't go into the morass that it has come out of <clears throat> or become much worse than what we have already seen. And it's important. It will be the responsibility of the international community, which has brought the world and Afghanistan and Afghan people to this stage. And so that's the most important thing. I would say that stability, support, Humanitarian otherwise, India is doing its bit, whatever it can. But then other countries need to do that so that the regime does not decelerate into uh, something much worse in my view. A UNSC report few months back revealed that Al-Qaeda retains a presence in Afghanistan in the provinces of Ghazni, Helmand, Kandhar, Nimruz, Paktika and Zabul where the group fought alongside the Taliban against the ousted government. The report also claimed that slain Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden's son visited Afghanistan last year. It further revealed that Amin Muhammadul Haq Sam Khan, who coordinated security for bin Laden, returned to his home in Afghanistan in August last year. The Taliban government rejected the report, but it is very difficult for Taliban rulers to deny another claim of UN report that Islamic State Khorasan is taking advantage of the turmoil in the country. According to the report, Islamic State Khorasan or ISISK is recruiting fighters from the Eastern Turkestan Islamic Movement and the Turkestan Islamic Party, among other foreign terrorist groups. 
it aims to position itself as the chief rejectionist force in Afghanistan and to expand into neighboring Central and South Asian countries. Terrorism now is posing serious threat to Afghanistan. Therefore, many world leaders and security experts believe that the forces which help Taliban in regaining the power should be held accountable. Pakistan is now in the hot seat for providing a haven for terrorists and many Afghans have been demanding action against Islamabad since the day Taliban took over Kabul. The UN member states are concerned that if Afghanistan descends into further chaos, some Afghan and foreign violent extremists may shift allegiances to Islamic State. But the problem is that now with the Russia-Ukraine crisis, obviously the focus on Afghanistan or any other war is much less. And that is the pity of it all. And this has been often mentioned by our leadership as well. That they create problems and then they leave them. And that is not good. The conflict landscape of Afghanistan is diverse and multifaceted, characterized by rivalries between jihadist groups and competition for recruits. The impacts go beyond the borders of Afghanistan. The events in Afghanistan therefore continue to demand great attention. Frustrated with the park's sponsor terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, people are now giving befitting reply to the terrorists. Along with protesting against the park-backed terrorists, common Kashmiris are now becoming helping hands of intelligence agencies and security forces in the valley. Recently, in Riyasi district's Tuksan village, people overpowered two most wanted Lashkar terrorists and handed them over to Jammu and Kashmir police. One of them was Lashkar commander Talib Hussain. He is the same man who was behind the recent IED blasts in Rajori district. A report. Park back terrorist groups seem hell bent to revive terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir that have by and large remained peaceful for the past few years. But all their attempts have been going in vain. As not only the security forces, but now even the people of Kashmir are raising their voice against terrorism. Recently, in Jammu and Kashmir's Riyasi district, residents of Tuksan Dhok village overpowered two most wanted lashkar e taiba terrorists and handed them over to Jammu and Kashmir police. One of the two terrorists apprehended was Lashkar Commander Talib Hussain, who was the mastermind behind the recent IED explosion in Riyasi district. Hussain was in constant touch with LED terrorist Qasim, based in Pakistan, and was involved in at least three cases of IED blasts at Rajori district, besides civilian killings and grenade blasts. Another terrorist was identified as Faisal Ahmed Dar of South Kashmir's Pulwama district. Two AK-47 rifles, seven grenades, a pistol and a huge quantity of ammunition were recovered from them. I did it, I also 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 did it. तो मैंने बोला मैं नहीं आ सकता हूं तुम्हारे साथ कुछ भी मुझे एक लड़की है तो ये छोड़कर आपके साथ मैं नहीं आ सकता हूं तो मैं नहीं गया फिर गुस्से में हो गया थोड़ा तो उसके बाद वो वो भी रुक गए बोलने लगे हम भी रहेंगे इधर मैंने बोला बैठो उसके बाद उन्होंने पूरा परिवार का नाम लिया हमारा हमारा पिताजी का नाम लिया हमारे बच्चों का नाम लिया तो हमें शक पड़ गया कि हमें कुछ the brave act of the Tuksan villagers is an indication that no one wants to support terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. The Tuksan brave hearts have become an inspiration for every citizen of the Himalayan region. The terrorists have lost support in both Jammu and Kashmir regions. The Pakistan-sponsored terrorism is on its last legs and the 32-year-old insurgency is all about to end. Besides losing the supports of locals, the shelf life of the youth joining terror outfits has declined. 
According to the recent report of Jammu and Kashmir police, from January 1st to May 31st this year, of the new terror recruits, only 26.6% survived for more than 12 months, while the fate of 9.3% of them was not known. Nearly 28.1% terror recruits were killed within one month, 54.7% within six months and 59.4% within nine months. Security forces have developed a strong intelligence network on the ground and it is the common man who is providing all the inputs to carry out the successful anti-terror operations in Jammu and Kashmir. Terrorists, separatists and the hate preachers are losing ground as the people of the Himalayan region want to be left alone so that they can live in peace and prosper. I think that it's a very big step that we have taken in this way that our young people have taken this way. And the Dehshat Gard was completely lost. You saw how much of the Asla and Munition was in it. There was a pistol, a foot sample, an ID was also in it. In this way, it was a very big step. इस तरह के सामान के बावजूद भी अपने हौसला और हिम्मत बहुत सारी उसकी दाद देते हैं वो दिखाते हुए इन्होंने जो वहाँ पर काम किया इनको पकड़ा और पकड़ने के बाद पुलिस को तला दी मुझे लगता है कि इसकी जितनी सराहना करें जितनी इनकी हम लोग सब मिलके प्रशंसा करें वो कम है ये एक बहुत अच्छी शुरुआत है और हम चाहते हैं कि इस तरह की शुरुआत जगह जगह पर हो मैसेज इज लाउड एंड क्लियर that people of Jammu and Kashmir are out to defeat Pakistan and for that they are even ready to put their lives at stake. They are supplementing the efforts of security forces by lending their eyes and ears like stone pelting, shutdowns and protests, terrorism in the Union territory is all set to end. And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.